Hi. Welcome to Biography Recap. In this video we are talking about the legend himself Buster Keaton. Joseph Frank Buster Keaton, born on October 4, 1895 to Myra Keaton, was an American actor, comedian, and filmmaker. Keaton was born into a vaudeville family in Piqua, Kansas, the small town where his mother, Myra Keaton, was when she went into labor. He is best known for his silent film work, in which his trademark was physical comedy accompanied by a stoic, deadpan expression that earned him the nickname, The Great Stone Face. According to a frequently repeated story, which may be apocryphal, Keaton acquired the nickname Buster at the age of 18 months. After the child fell down a long flight of stairs without injury, an actor friend named George Party remarked, gee whiz, he's a regular buster. After this, Keaton's father began to use the nickname to refer to the youngster. Keaton retold the anecdote over the years, including in a 1964 interview with the CBC's Telescope. In Keaton's retelling, he was six months old when the incident occurred, and Harry Houdini gave him the nickname though the family did not get to know Houdini until later. At the age of three, Keaton began performing with his parents in The Three Keatons. He first appeared on stage in 1899 in Wilmington, Delaware. The act was mainly a comedy sketch. Myra played the saxophone to one side, while Joe and Keaton performed center stage. The young Keaton goaded his father by disobeying him, and the elder Keaton responded by throwing him against the scenery, into the orchestra pit, or even into the audience. A suitcase handle was sewn into Keaton's clothing to aid with the constant tossing. The act evolved as Keaton learned to take trick falls safely, he was rarely injured or bruised on stage. This knockabout style of comedy led to accusations of child abuse, and occasionally, arrest. However, Keaton was always able to show the authorities that he had no bruises or broken bones. He was eventually billed as the little boy who can't be damaged, and the overall act as the roughest act that was ever in the history of the stage. Decades later, Keaton said that he was never hurt by his father and that the falls and physical comedy were a matter of proper technical execution. In 1914, he told the Detroit News, the secret is in landing limp and breaking the fall with a foot or a hand. It's a knack. I started so young that landing right is second nature with me. Several times I'd have been killed if I hadn't been able to land like a cat. Imitators of our act don't last long, because they can't stand the treatment. In 1996, Entertainment Weekly recognized Keaton as the seventh greatest film director, writing that, more than Chaplin, Keaton understood movies, he knew they consisted of a four-sided frame in which resided a malleable reality off which his persona could bounce. A vaudeville child star, Keaton grew up to be a tinkerer, an athlete, a visual mathematician, his films offer belly laughs of mind-boggling physical invention and a spacey determination that nears philosophical grandeur. In 1999 the American Film Institute ranked him as the 21st greatest male star of classic Hollywood cinema. Working with independent producer Joseph M. Schenck and filmmaker Edward F. Klein, Keaton made a series of successful two-reel comedies in the early 1920s, including One Week, 1920, The Playhouse, 1921, Cops, 1922, and The Electric House, 1922. He then moved to feature-length films, several of them, such as Sherlock Jr., 1924, The General, 1926, Steamboat Bill, Jr., 1928, and The Cameraman, 1928 remain highly regarded. The General is viewed as his masterpiece, Orson Welles considered it the greatest comedy ever made, and perhaps the greatest film ever made. Welles said Keaton was beyond all praise, a very great artist, and one of the most beautiful men I ever saw on the screen. He was also a great director. In the last analysis, no one came near him. In 2018, Peter Bogdanovich released The Great Buster, a celebration, a tribute to Keaton featuring Mel Brooks, Carl Reiner, Werner Herzog and Quentin Tarantino, among others. Keaton's art has inspired full academic study. The General has placed highly on the sight and sound pole, and our hospitality, Sherlock Jr. and The Navigator also received multiple votes. His career declined when he signed with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and lost his artistic independence. 
His wife divorced him, and he descended into alcoholism. He recovered in the 1940s, remarried, and revived his career as an honored comic performer for the rest of his life, earning an Academy Honorary Award in 1959. Keaton is often described as having been ahead of his time, Anthony Lane wrote, he was just too good, in too many ways, too soon. No action thriller of the last, blood-streaked decade has matched the kinetic violence at the end of Steamboat Bill, Jr., in which a storm pulls Keaton through one random catastrophe after another. Anyone who thinks that the movie within a movie is a recent conceit, the province of the Purple Rose of Cairo and Last Action Hero, should check out Sherlock Jr., a film in which Keaton dreams himself into another film, he strolls up the aisle of the theater, hops into the action, and fights to keep up with the breakneck changes of scene. As for the general, where do you start? It's a film about a train, but it's also a spirited romance, peppered with bickering and longing, and its evocation of the Civil War period has never been surpassed. He is the first action hero, to be precise, he is a small, pale-faced American who is startled, tripped, drenched and inspired into becoming a hero. And finally, we missed the legend at February 1, 1966 aged 70 years old. And moved to his resting place, Forest Lawn Memorial Park, Hollywood Hills, California, US. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, share, like and comment. See you next video, bye.